What's going on guys, it's Greg here today and welcome back to some Ground War. We have part 3 for how to get better at Ground War. And today we'll be talking about objective play, water ops, and all of that kind of stuff as you guys can see here. Pushing E flag. Now, if you guys have seen, we have A and C and we get E. That means that our teammates can spawn here at E, then we can assault D and then we can try to go ahead and push them towards one flag which as a result means that all the enemies can be spawning at one flag their hq or the helicopter and there's gonna be less areas that they could be spawning around obviously and therefore that means that we can gain map control and have a better chance of winning the game earning a lot of kill streaks and kill streaks again apply a lot of pressure on the map which means we can get some wins now however you guys saw right here how i'm playing this flag is i'm trying to play angles and trying to see if the enemies are going to be able to peek me from certain areas so right now i know they're not going to be behind me after clearing those guys out because well there's no one taking the flag right now right i'm the only person taking the flag now someone comes in so what am i going to do i'm listening did they come in behind me no they did not come in behind me are they to my right or are they to a little bit up further because there's another little room that they can come in now i see the drill charge comes in here from the uh, right so i know there's a guy to my right and i see the guy that comes from the front and i take out the guy to the right now i'm able to go ahead and continue securing the objective you guys can see now these guys are not happy with me taking this objective there's three tanks trying to get one player off of the e flag and i think that's kind of funny because <laughs> i mean guys one player on the e flag does not require three vehicles to kill okay it takes one person to shoot their gun and take them out <laughs> so it's just kind of funny to me that they had to bring all these vehicles to try to roll up just to take me out but we get e and here's the bad thing right i had no teammates spawning on me and since i just capped e i was hoping that more enemies or i mean teammates were gonna be spawning in on the e flag to give me some backup however that is not the case and you guys will see this quite a bit in ground war it's really 50 50 if your teammates are going to actually help you out and if they're going to actually play off those it breaks in the map that you make right so for example i capped the e flag that's a break in the map they could spawn here at e however they didn't and uh, they actually end up coming in through the helicopter and now i'm basically just trying to hope maybe some of my squad mates will spawn me you know but uh that is not the case the squad mates they uh, who knows what they're doing out in timbuktu so i'm like all right at this point let me try to do this again so i'm sweeping you know making sure are there any enemies around and uh the reason i'm taking a look for enemies is because um they could be anywhere you know these little staircases just doing their thing so i want to make sure that they're not uh just chilling you know so i'm gonna go ahead and activate dead silence because i know that these enemies are around here and i want to be able to run through pretty much rent free and be able to get the kills on them but teammates end up getting the guys that are on the flag and i come out here because the nearest attack insert but there's a tank on the hill sniping at me. Why? One Again, just like one player at E, and the tankers are down horrendous. So, is what it is. Um, we were able to gain some control, I guess, over at the other flags because the tanks didn't roll up since they were so hyper-focused on me. Which, if you are a tanker, again, you don't want to be so hungry for a single infantry. Um, you want to be going after... A lot of people that are going to be around the enemy occupied objectives you want to play the objective as a tanker you want to help your team be able to capture those flags so first things first I caught the gunship and this thing is really good in ground war because you could destroy pretty much any vehicle you want uh, while you're in the gunship and that's why I run it is I want to get rid of all the vehicles on the map so that way at that point we can go ahead and gain map control and it's going to be just infantry versus infantry around those objective points. And, you know, whoever's team is better at shooting their gun is obviously going to be able to capture those flags then. So, again, just trying to take out as many vehicles as possible on the gunship. I really wish the gunship did last longer. It really does not last in this game at all. And that's why I just don't really tend to run it much as I did with other killstreaks uh, in the past. You know, the gunship in Modern Warfare 2019, it, I, I enjoyed using it every once in a while, but... Um, in this game, I don't know, it just, it just doesn't feel quite as good, you know? Um, but I do like it, like I said, I still like it because it can take out every single streak in the game. Now let's go ahead and move over to some water ops. So we're still on Sarif Bay, and as you can see, I'm taking a nice little swim, burning my calories for the day. And uh, I know there's a guy here, and I don't want to full on sprint because I don't want him to hear my footsteps because I want to be able to take him out with ease. And then, uh, again, snipers are trying to take me out, so I go ahead, do a little movement to, to escape their shots 
and uh, I'm going to go through the water again. So as you guys can see, I'm utilizing the water and I'm coming up as my breath is running out, taking a quick breather and uh, going right back down underneath. Again, I need a breather, coming up. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take a little quick breath, go back underwater. So as you guys can see over here, I am playing, trying to get a nice little flank off here to the D flag. And you guys can see these guys are all just sitting there staring over at B. Go ahead and take them out with ease because we played it by the water. They had no clue that I was flanking them through the water. Now that I'm at D, I'm not just going to blind rush the flag because that'd be stupid. One, I'm by myself. Two, this is a very open flag, right? It's not like I'm in a building. So if a tank rolls up, I'm dead. Uh, if the enemies are going to keep spawning in, which they can, up to the flag is taken halfway through, then obviously I'm just going to get overran. So at this point, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to buy myself some time, get some backup. You know, maybe the pave low comes over. Oh, look, a boat's coming up, right? Teammates are coming up on a boat. I want to see if I can get a little flint going here uh, through the mountain, but it's out of bounds, and the timer is only five seconds, so I'm not going to be able to make a play there. Um, I see my teammates are rolling up though and now that we have a little squad here I'm going to go ahead and try to play the objective with them and we're going to try to take this flag. Now a tank rolls up and this is kind of bad. I don't have anything that could take out a tank, right? Like me personally, I don't. So it's not in my arsenal for this game. So I decide, alright, I'm going to go ahead and throw down my mortar strike there. If the tank's playing near the mortar strike, I'm going to go ahead and take it out with that. I go back to the water because I don't want this tank to kill me because I'm 500 score off of a gunship. You know, this could help me. If I get the gunship, I could call it in. We could take out the tank. Teammates end up somehow getting D. I'm not really quite sure how. I guess this tanker just wasn't really that good at taking out infantry. Um... So I go ahead and call in a VTOL jet over at E, because there's a lot of snipers and stuff over at E. They're trying to uh, take us out, so I'm going to have that hover over them to apply some pressure on them so they can't just sit there rent-free without the cold-blooded perk to go ahead and shoot at me as I'm over here at D. So I'm playing the flank again. The enemies are taking D back. I still don't trust it because there is that tank there, the APC, and my goal is, you know, I really just want to get this gunship to take it out. And I'm going to let you guys know that I do not get this gunship, unfortunately, so let's talk about why. So first things first, I'm still here just waiting to see if someone can take out the APC, see if I can just get a couple picks for the gunship. And as you guys can see, this tanker is still lurking around. Now, I decide I'm going to go up on the roof to see if I can get some kills, you know, over D, try to kill the enemies that are spawning in at D. And uh, it seems like the teammates are actually starting to take out the APC. It got on fire, so I'm like, okay, it might be safe to go ahead and capture D. Let's go ahead down. Let's get back on D. And as you guys can see, as I'm taking D, there is an enemy somewhere on D, and I'm getting shot in the back. I don't know where they're at. I'm like, okay, do I just sit out here? I should have honestly just kind of sat still and, you know, done, done something a little bit differently. But it turns out there's actually an enemy right here staring at me. Um, zero clue how this guy got here and how no one noticed him or anything. I, I don't know how I didn't really notice him. But then again, I'm not really just expecting an enemy to be there at the docks, you know. Um... So yeah, unfortunate there, but anyways, this match ends in a DEFCON and we win the game, so let's go ahead and take a look at some other stuff. So here we are now on Tarak, and I got an APC, which the first thing that I like to do, even though this is a mobile spawn point, is there is one thing that we need to do, and that is take out the enemy's mobile spawn point, and you guys will see right here, it is this heli. Now, I have not used an APC in a while, so I was a bit rusty with my shots, um, thankfully some other teammates were also helping me take this thing out and we were able to take it out before it can go ahead and gain map control because who knows how many enemies are sitting in this thing on the, you know, to be, to begin, um, because if there's a lot of enemies in there, then they have access to anywhere on the map that they so choose. So you guys can see we go ahead and take it out and teammates have gotten E. So at this point, oh, I see another vehicle starting to roll up. I'm just going to go ahead and disable that. I think someone ends up killing this guy. Um and don't have to worry about him. I'm not going to spend too much time focusing on a single infantry because it's kind of pointless and redundant, um, especially because there's still teammates around. They could easily just go ahead and take him out, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. But I am going to go ahead and push up, and uh, one of the things I'm looking for is enemy vehicles. So you guys are going to see that as a tanker, you want to play near cover um, because you can get angles on those enemy vehicles, especially the ones who are not that smart and they're just fully exposing themselves like this guy. So as you can see, I'm just kind of waiting, reloading, go ahead and take some shots at him. Another vehicle is rolling up to my side and he's able to hit me and, um, 
Yeah, so it, it's this point I'm just kind of playing it, you know, trying to take out these vehicles, trying to do as much damage as I can to them. Looks like the driver is focused on the other APC and we're ganging up on them. We take them out and both those vehicles are gone at this point. So now at this point, I'm going to start assaulting B with the vehicle. All right, so we've taken out a few vehicles, taken out the pave low, and that's going to give us a huge advantage on the map because we have tanks all over the place. So I'm going to go ahead and roll up to B and I'm going to stay in a tank with score streaks. Why? Because as I'm killing people on these objectives and I'm capturing the objective, I'm going to be getting score, right? Even though I'm in a tank, normally you don't earn score for being in a tank. And as you guys can see, I'm still not really earning score for being in a tank. But if I do capture the objective while in this tank, I will get the score. And as you guys can see, I go ahead and pull out. I get my cruise missile. Uh, I guess we're doing some damage and getting the flag. And then on top of that, I'm going to go ahead and take this guy out for the VTOL jet. Whenever I'm on Tarak, I tend to run low kill streaks because this map is hard as an infantry rifle based player. Um, the reason I say that is because there's a lot of vehicles, five vehicles, tanks, I mean, on each team, um, not including the pave low and other vehicles people can use. And then on top of that, a lot of people like to snipe on this map because it's very open. So you guys are going to see, I'm going to use the cruise missile to go ahead and take out the enemy's pave lows. And let's go ahead and see what I'm going to do about assaulting objectives as an infantry. So here we are at A, and I am using my trusty old Honey Badger assault rifle, or the Chimera. And I am basically looking to go ahead and get some picks here while I'm capturing the A flag. So right now I have a Claymore blocking my back because that way if someone wants to flank me through here in this little cubby, they, can, they will go ahead and have a nice explosive surprise waiting for them. On top of that, block off the other angle with a Claymore from my munitions box so that way I can safely capture this flag from here. Now it looks like no one wants to contest me, but that's where I'm dead wrong. Here comes people now and they want to contest me. So what do I do in this situation? Am I just going to go ahead and hunt down? that enemy player who's on the flag or am I gonna play it smart or am I gonna wait and I actually want to wait now while I am trying to engage this guy and trying to figure out where he's at I'm not gonna fully expose myself for one of two reasons so first off who knows how many enemies are on this there could be another guy here already and also what if some teammates decide they want to spawn on me or what if some teammates actually come to help me out for reason number two there's no other teammates here right now, so why would I go ahead and expose myself and give away myself whenever I have already made so much progress on this flag? So again, I'm buying myself some time trying to see if this guy's going to engage me. Eventually, you got to make a move, though, and I figure out where he's at, and I figured he was there um, considering whenever I was kind of moving around, there was no one else there. So I go ahead and I take everybody out to capture the flag. We get another VTOL jet, which again, the VTOL jet on this map is super powerful. I'm going to go ahead and place that thing down over near B because it's the only flag that is owned by the enemies right now, which means it's going to farm a lot of kills. On top of that, I can use my cruise missiles and all that other kind of stuff to make some breaks on the map. You guys will see here about the cruise missile. I'm looking for vehicles. Didn't seem like there were any vehicles that I noticed while I was in the cruise missile. So I just go ahead for some in infantry kills. Again, look for pave lows, all that kind of stuff and that's when i'll just use the cruise missile for some single infantry now it turns out there was a tank next to me but i didn't see that in the cruise missile um so that was unfortunate um but anyways let's go ahead and take a look at some other stuff so now i want to go ahead and assault the b flag once again they got a and i'm trying to condense the amount of spawns on the enemy team where everyone is spawning at for map control and that is why i keep capturing all these flags so i am now over at b and uh, I want to capture B, but there's a tank here. There's a Wilson here, and I'm yet again the only player on my team that is at B. So what am I going to do? I am going to get a little flank going, and I know that based off of flag spawns, that the enemies are going to be spawning towards their headquarters just like it's Modern Warfare 2019. So if they want to spawn towards B, or if they want to spawn on B, I should say, um, they're going to be spawning towards this side that I'm standing on right now because it's closer to their home headquarters. So this guy goes ahead, he flies in, and I'm um, just trying to get some information, trying to see if some teammates will roll up. There are so many tanks here, so I don't want to give away my location because I don't want to just step on B right now and start capturing because that would be stupid. All these tanks are just going to roll up, they're going to kill me, and I'm going to be taken out of this position, which I'm in a really good position to capture B once these tanks go away and it's just me and the infantry. So over here, some bad shots. The Camara gets really hard to control in ground war, and I just want to go over this. So this gun's a double-edged sword. It's really good in ground war, and it's really bad in ground war. 
So it's really good in ground work because it is basically has the built-in tracker perk where it's going to hide those death skulls. And you see a death skull right there on my screen. Uh, that means a teammate of mine died over there. Now, it, this gun will hide that from the enemies. So it's, in ground war, this gun is really good for that reason. But it's also really bad for that reason. And here's why. This gun, considering it utilizes those 300 blackout rounds and it has the death skulls effect, the bullet velocity is really poor on this gun. And there is no way to get um, better bullet velocity on this gun other than a barrel. So I have to take off the integrated suppressor in order to gain extra bullet velocity with a nice barrel for the gun uh, that's going to increase our bullet velocity. So as a result, the Camara is going to be harder to hit targets at a distance, and it has some pretty heavy directional recoil, which means down further ranges, especially the smaller the target is, the harder it's going to be to be able to control this gun. So here we are trying to regain on B, and since our APC came up, I decided to wait with the APC. We go ahead, we get on the B flag, and we're able to get a nice secure. So hopefully these flag tips and playing objectives in ground war helped you guys out. In summary, basically you want to try to make breaks on the map. You don't want to just blindly play the objective and just throw your body at it because, well, guess what guys, if you're by yourself, you're going to die. So you basically want to try to wait for some backup. You can play it by yourself if you're in a building, but if you're in the open, you're going to have to play it smart. Try to make some breaks and wait for backup. Anyways, Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, and I will see you all in the next video. Be sure to drop a subscription if you are new to the channel, like the video if you enjoyed it, and have a great day, and Happy New Year's.